So in southern Ontario, there has definitely been a shift in the weather. The nights are getting much chillier. We have gone from about 15 degrees Celsius down to 5 degrees Celsius. And even during the day, there's a little nip to the air. So it is time to bring in any tropicals or annuals that you plan on over in winter, getting them indoors. Now doing that, there is some prep work that you should do in order to prevent bringing in any bugs or fungus and stuff with you. And there are many ways of going about doing this. Um, the way that I did it is not how I would normally do it, but the switch in weather really caught me off guard this year and it was a bit of a mad scramble. Normally I really enjoy repotting plants and inspecting them and, and going over the process. And this time around, it's a little less enjoyable of an experience. I normally would do a bunch of my soaking in the bathtub, but because it was such a scramble, the girls were already in bed and I didn't want to wake up the whole household and then make even more of a mess for myself to be cleaning up. So I did it at night in the backyard. But I'm going to walk you through what I did and why it is that I do this method over other methods because there are a few different ways that you can go about this. There are hydrogen peroxide options. There are um, spraying the leaves. Um, you can buy insecticidal soaps, but I don't like using any pesticides on my things, even though soap in theory could be considered a pesticide. And one thing to note, um, you will see me using Dawn soap and that is because of the scramble. Except that Dawn is not a soap, Dawn is a detergent and ideally you want to be using a cast style soap, something that's much more mild, much more gentle. You can use Dawn, it just needs to be really diluted and um, because it, the, the detergent will strip the natural oils from the leaves and that can then cause um, opportunities for fungus and other issues to actually be getting into the plant. So it can almost backfire in a way. So first off, what I do once I have all of my plants gathered together and I've figured out which ones I'm going to be bringing in and which ones I'm going to be letting go because often I don't have enough space to bring everything in. So kind of taking a general inventory is really step number one. And once I have figured out which ones I'm going to be bringing in, I start to knock the old soil off. Now one of the options is, is that you can just scrape off the top few inches of soil to get rid of where any bugs may have laid. But I find that if your plants have drainage holes, bugs can also enter in through the bottom. Um, the pots themselves often need a bit of a washing before they come inside. And I'm really kind of negligent with my house plants, especially after a summer season. So I find that just being able to depot the plant, shake off all the excess soil, scrub the pot out, works far better for me and I have had poor experiences with just taking the top few inches off and using other sprays on the leaves. I have still had white fly infestations and other gnats and things come into the house with me. So that is why I go to this extent of depotting and knocking all of the soil off of the roots. So um, occasionally it will be root bound because of neglect. It's never been brought outside before I don't even think I've ever really fertilized it. it's been in the same pot forever I just got it it was cute it survived but um, it has really needed some help you can see how badly root bound it is here one of my plants had some really bad root bound on it the other ones were still fairly new so they weren't too bad um, but this also gives you the opportunity to really begin to inspect your plants for health and see do they even need a bigger pot at this time are there other things going on and you can then adapt for those plants specifically so i knock all the soil off a hose to blast some of the other soil bits off that may not and then i dunk them into some soapy water and I submerge the roots in that for a few minutes. And usually while I'm submerging it, then I go about and I start scrubbing up the pot that they are going to be residing in and giving that a nice deep clean to make sure that there's nothing carrying over in that pot, making sure to get underneath any lips, the bottom, the sides. Um, oftentimes you'll get like kind of cobwebby bits on there as well. So really working through making sure that you have all areas covered. And then once I have that, I will often flip the plant if it is a smaller plant. So I was able to get away with this for both my citrus um, and kind of my papaya tree. The papaya one didn't fit very well into the soapy water bath. Um, so I kind of had to splash it around a little bit because I just, this is why I like using the bathtub. I find that the bathtub makes it uh, much easier to fully submerge the entire plant, but then it's also, it's a messier job because it's inside the house. 
So I submerge the roots, let them soak, submerge the leafy bits, let that soak. That typically will cover the entire plant and ensure that nothing is coming in with you. Um, you can soak it up to say 15-20 minutes and you're not going to have any ill effects on the plants. I was kind of rushing through this in order to get inside before it got really quite chilly out. Um, and also because I was using Dawn, I didn't want to leave it on too too long and strip the plants too badly. So once I have them all soaked, I will then rinse it off with the hose and begin to repot with fresh new potting soil. Now the other potting soil that I took off it's not garbage, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. And if anything, I have fertilized it fairly recently outside because I wasn't expecting this cold snap. So I'm going to reuse that um, in future years. Like I'll further amend it and continue to repurpose it. So I'm not going to get rid of that, but I'm going to use brand new potting soil that has not been sitting around outside ideally for the stuff that I'm going to be bringing inside. So once I have everything potted back up, I am able to make sure that the roots are nicely formed, loose, they're not circling the pot anymore, and that they have a, maybe a better center in the pot if the plant has been kind of growing a little bit wonky. And then I will stake it if needed as well and give it a really thorough watering and let it drain out a bit before moving it indoors. Okay, so here they are, ready to go inside. I still have to work on this one over here. You can see like, the soil in there has all sorts of droppings from out here and then this now has nice fresh um, new potting soil. Once I have brought them indoors I still like to give it a quarantine before bringing it in with all the rest of my plants. So mine often go down into the basement where I start my seedlings and they are sequestered for a little bit just in case something was missed, something came in underside a leaf that I still didn't notice. I don't want that spreading to all of the other plants I have in the house, causing a much bigger issue that I may have to contend with. And then if I do notice something further, I can go in and start spraying the leaves with another soapy concoction in order to treat that from there. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you do live in a condo is that your hardiness zone is going to be at a cooler or lower level than the, the ground floor units will be for your space. So if you are, say, up five stories, up 20 stories up and you have a balcony garden, you may have to do this sooner than those that have a backyard garden because the wind and the lack of insulating factors such as um, canopies on trees is going to leave you more subjective to harsher temperatures and more likely to have wind and frost damage. So just keep that in mind when you are trying to bring in your plants is you may need to jump the gun a bit sooner than everybody else. So I hope that this was helpful and you are able to bring all of your plants indoors successfully and get them overwintered. And odds are you will not have enough space for everything. As gardeners, we often do not. And we will see you again in another video. Thanks.